are nurdles or should nurdles be classified as a toxic substance? Well, I'm going to need to know more about nurdles first. Welcome to the deep chat. And I will give you my hot take because I know a little bit more. And, and the answer is unequivocally yes. And I think you'll agree with me. Nurdles are little plastic pellets that are used as a basis for building other things to melt down and reconstitute. 3D printing? Anything, I okay. guess. Maybe bottles even, you know, they're just little plastic pellets. So there was a ship that was going under and it basically re- released 172 metric tons of nurdles into the ocean. Oh boy. <laughs> so it's it's basically worse than oil because now they're finding them in birds, dead fish, you know, they're eating them. They look like food. They're all over the coast of certain countries or they're going to make landfall soon. Ugh. The title of the article in The Guardian is Nurdles, the toxic waste you've probably never heard of. Billions of these tiny plastic pellets are floating in the ocean, causing as much damage as oil spills, yet they are still not classified as hazardous. Why not? Don't know. Don't know enough about it yet, but it's... And they're not considered hazardous waste today? No, no, not right now. They're persistent pollutants, meaning like at least oil will circulate, disperse, eventually settle to the bottom, or we can scrape it off the top. Whereas these are highly persistent in the sense that they'll wash ashore for decades. They'll, they're not going to degrade. They're calling them toxic sponges, right? They attract these chemicals and other pollutants and they adhere to the surface. So is there a movement to get them reclassified or I don't know what the process is even like for something like that? Uh, it's a good question. From what I gather, there is a petition by Sri Lanka to get them reclassified, as you said, um, as a toxic substance, which probably means that a certain set of regulations pops in and this material would be you know, packaged in a way that it couldn't escape if the ship went down or if it fell overboard. Yeah. Why have I never heard of this, though? This can't be a new technology. No, I haven't heard of it until now. I'm sure it's happened more than once. I'll bet. Yeah, the part that bothers me the most is that it feels like we have to wait until something happens and then classify a specific substance as regulated or bad, like these nurdles, rather than having uh, regulations around the mechanism. Like, anything you can dump in the ocean and all the wildlife dies, that should be regulated. Right, yep. And But that's kind of how we operate as a society. We wait for a crisis, unintentionally. We wait for a crisis. Not wait, I shouldn't say. We we don't take action until a crisis Reactive, happens. I don't think it's, we're intentionally, you know, waiting and saying, eh, we're just going to wait until a crisis. But it's very reactionary, as you said. Yeah. I guess <laughs> fishermen are saying it even gets into their ears Ugh. when they're swimming. And it's affecting tourism as well. I'll bet. The thing about those is I'm sure a lot of them fall to the bottom. Some of them aren't, you know, going to float as easily. Some make it to shore. Some take a different ocean current. Now they're sitting out in the middle of the ocean. Animals will continue to Mm -hmm. eat those. So uh, I don't want to eat an animal that's been digesting nurdles for, you know, three months. You better become a vegetarian. That, that, That can't be healthy. Yeah. Is this going to be a big issue of our time? Um, I don't think it'll be an issue of our time because there's too many other issues. Like, for instance, um, you know that there was, I forgot the kid's name, and I love this kid. Um, He decided he was going to do something about ocean cleanup, Uh right? And he started by just doing little experiments, and he's young. Now there's uh, multiple people, and I think countries funding his efforts, and they've done, I think, their third successful test and they collected tons of uh, ocean debris, plastic and everything. And what he did really intelligently was a lot of it could be recycled um, and turned into potentially products. So he, he made, I think, sunglasses out of the debris and resold them. You know, obviously it's kind of gimmicky sure. in the sense that he's probably not going to get a massive return on that investment, but at least it brings awareness. Right. And he's trying to solve the problem instead of just talking about it. You know, he's just plunging ahead and he's making it happen. So I think there are, that the ocean debris cleanup will happen. But I also believe that these nets will not, if I'm not mistaken, they will not capture nurdles. Aha. Yeah, they're small. They're aiming at the larger debris. 
So how, how would you sift the ocean for nurdles without collecting other things like shrimp? Good question, yeah. Nurdles are millimeter-sized. I mean, they're tiny. It's like a lentil, like the size of a lentil. The net that has to you know, grab those would be ridiculously small. The other solution that pops in my head is something that eats plastic, a bacteria that eats plastic, right, which we've developed, I believe exists. But what can you do with that? What, are you going to spray the ocean with this bacteria that eats plastic? Hypothetically. I mean, I, this is not my area, but biotech is one of at least the plausible outcomes, that if we could invent this suicidal bacteria that eats plastic and dies, and you just spray it there, you know, obviously this could run amok, but there's a plausible mechanism. <laughs> obviously this could run amok. That's <laughs> right. last words. Release it. Releasing viruses and bacteria into the wild without a knowledge of what they're going to do is, you know, that that doesn't have come with any um, caveats, right? <laughs> I just mean this isn't total it's, science fiction. There is a mechanism there. N- no, yeah. there is a mechanism that just that mechanism scares the hell sure. out of me. Like, didn't they release genetically modified mosquitoes that are going to breed with normal mosquitoes and turn? Uh, them into mosquitoes that cannot carry malaria. malaria? Yes, this is a big Something triumph like from a few years ago, as I recall. Right, scary, but I would think a little more controllable because it's a it's an entire organism that you're feeding back into the ecosystem that is going to interact with other mosquitoes, etc. Yeah. Whereas spraying the ocean with a bacteria. <laughs> The bacteria stays around. If you made these terrible mosquitoes and they all die off, then you just wasted your time. Right, right, exactly. They're not going to breed some super mosquito that is the size of a dinosaur. Quite unlikely, yeah. Right. But bacteria um, evolve so quickly, and you're spraying it on, and it's in the ocean, so you have to put the bacteria in the ocean. And then the bacteria starts interacting with all sorts of other things, and who knows what comes of it. I mean, I don't know enough about this. Yeah. Can we create an inert, inert bacteria that, like you said, is suicidal, that has no chance of actually you know, evolving into something worse? I, yeah, I'm not in the right field to say so, but I'm not as scared as you are. I think that the way they engineer bacteria and the simplicity of the organism and the depth to which we're starting to understand their genetic code makes this something that could be executed safely by the right group of professionals. I don't know. I think um, if the, if most of the nurdles are at the top, there's probably some sort of skimming that would be more efficient. That's probably right. Like, yeah, the, there you just left the top, you know, half inch of debris, and and if shrimp don't really, I don't believe most things collect at the top. I mean, look, we can we have machines that can shuck corn and pull it off the stalk, yeah. and you know, pull vegetables off gently. I suspect that there's a way to tackle this. It would just be extremely expensive and time consuming, right? Totally agree. I mean, how do you do that for the whole ocean? Yeah. <laughs> what is the, isn't the ocean 80%, uh, 60% of the land? Uh, I Earth's believe surface? that's about right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's massive. That's like saying driving every square inch of, and even then it's moving around. So you already drove that square inch. Now you got to go, well, it, it came back to where we already vacuumed, right? Yeah. Yeah, I suspect there that there's something they could do with ocean currents where they know that, you know, you put the skimmer in in particular currents and eventually things are going to cycle through those. Something like that, yeah. Monumentous challenge, but there's a lot of good ideas on the table. Yeah, but that doesn't solve the problem of uh, the ones that make landfall. True, yeah. Then now you can't skim, and now what are you going to do? Pick each piece up? Woo! A lot of labor. (laughs) Yes. Well, hey, look, we everybody needs jobs, right? <laughs> sure. We can have the worldwide fund. Yeah, everybody collect along uh collect along Sri Lanka Great. and we'll pay you, you know, one penny for every nurdle. Mhm. That's ridiculous, but, you know, with enough manpower, they built the pyramids. Yep. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's exactly right. We just have to put resources into fixing problems like this and sometimes it takes a lot of resources. Yeah.